until the work on earth is done. Watch as the clouds rise, we low. Lift up the sound as he makes our praises strong.
The next song we're going to sing is called uh, Cornerstone. Uh, and I love the chorus in that song because it says, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. And I think we, we oftentimes can put our trust in other frames, in other belief systems or in uh, other idols. But when we sing this song and when we sing this chorus, I think we confess that uh, the only way to real peace and real freedom is, is through uh, Jesus Christ. And the last verse, the verse 3, it says, When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy jail, my anchor holds within the whale. And I think even when darkness seems to hide his face, uh, our God is present. I just think that's amazing. So, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's soul. Through, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all.
You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. For great are you, Lord. You are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. 
God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we have fled to take hold of the hope set before us, may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. thank you so much for these words that you've given us and I thank you for this opportunity that you've given us all to come together and to worship you God and I thank you for everything that you've given us God and as Alexander comes up I pray that you would open up our hearts and our minds to hear the words that you want to say through him God and I pray that you would give him the right words to say and that they would touch our hearts My name is Alexander, and I have the privilege to share my heart with you today. Um, I just want to start off with a prayer. God, I thank you. I just thank you for who you are. I thank you that you love us so, so much, and we just need you now, God. 
We ask that you would come, that you would bless us with your presence here now, God. Because if we don't have you, God, we don't have anything. If we don't have you, we don't have anything. So I just thank you that you're here right now with your spirit, with your presence, God, that you would talk to us, that we would hear your voice today, God, that you would talk through me and through these amazing songs, God, that we would really just encounter you tonight and go home with a new hope. I thank you, Jesus. Show us who you are tonight. Amen. Okay, so I'm Alexander. Um, anyway, I'm from Norway. That's okay. Um, so I want to ask you guys a question today. I want to ask you a question, and it's the question if you know God. I want to ask if you know God. <clears throat> not if you know of him, not if you read your Bible, not if you pray, not even if you go to church. I'm not asking if you're a Christian. I'm asking if you know God. Because God wants to know us. And I, I, I mean, I love the Lord. He loves us so much, and he really wants to know us. I want to read something from Matthew 7. In Matthew 7, it says, Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. When judgment day comes, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, in your name we spoke God's message. By your name we drove out many demons and performed even many miracles. But then I will say to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you wicked people. What a bummer that must be. I mean, what if, you, what if you're a Christian? What if you live your whole life on this earth? You, you go to church, you serve in church, and you're just this amazing person. People come up to you for answers, and, and you're loved by everyone. But they, then you come to heaven, and, and you hear Jesus say these words to you, get away from me, because I never knew you. What if you realize that your whole life was just a lie? Wouldn't that be terrible? And I just want to tell you guys today that we don't need to be confused about that. We don't need to be unsecure or confused about where we're going. I want to promise you, I can promise you today that you can know for a fact where you're going to spend eternity and who you're going to spend it with. And you can know that fact through knowing God now. Because if you know God now, then there's no questions where you're going to spend eternity. But it's not just eternity. It's not just getting to heaven. It's knowing God now. And these verses, it's not talking against miracles or healing the sick. Because Jesus did that. And he told us to do just the same. He loves that. But this is talking about having works and the things you do taking the place of knowing God. It's, it's a warning for us to not let the things we do for God let it, let, let take the place of knowing Him, take the place of being alone with Him. It said, but only those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. And I can promise you today that the will of God and what He wants us to do is first to know Him. He wants us to go out. He wants us to preach the gospel. He wants us to heal the sick and, and be there for people. But firstly, he wants us to know him. That's the will of the Father. And we, we can actually know God's will. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is good and acceptable, the perfect will of God. And it says that we have been given the mind of Christ through Jesus. 
This is what he has given us. And we can know him. We don't have to be unsecure about like what God wants me to do. I don't know what his will is in this situation. No, we can know him. And we can represent him and love him. You see, I met a lady at Mall of America uh, earlier this year. And I was just going to buy some clothes. And uh, I just went up to pay. And I just told her that Jesus loved her so much. And she said, you know, I actually know that. I'm a Christian. So I said, cool, that's, that's really good. But then I asked her, okay, you're a Christian, but do you know Jesus personally? Do you know Jesus personally? And she said, you know, not really, no. She didn't know Jesus. She was a Christian, but she didn't know Jesus. And so I just shared with her, as I was paying, the reality of why Jesus came and how much he wants to know her. And she just thanked me, and that was good. But I want to tell you today that you can be a Christian without knowing God. You can go to church your entire life without knowing God. And that must never happen. We need to be so careful that our surroundings and what we do for God and the things we do in life, whatever it is, if it's school, if it's sports, if it's serving Him, whatever it is, it must never take the place of knowing Him. It's always first priority to know God and out of knowing Him, then we're supposed to do. Then we're supposed to. We're, just, we're supposed to be sons and daughters of God. We're supposed to know that He our father and you're supposed to be secure in your identity that you're his son you're his daughter and nothing can stop us because he loves us and we can know him every single day and I'm not talking about I mean I'm talking about a relationship because what if what if there's a place for us to wake up in the morning and like just waking up early And just the first thought on our mind being, God, I love you. God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity you gave me today to share your love. I thank you that I can encounter you now today. And as you walk through work, as you walk through school, you can just talk to him. And what if there's a place for us to live in where we always have to, we feel this hunger and this longing to just, to just pull back for a moment, to be with him and just to love him and talk to him because we see it all through the Gospels. When Jesus pulled away, he spent the night on the mountain. He woke up early in the morning before everyone else and he was spent time with his father because without that, we're nothing. We need to know him. You see, I want to read John 3, 16 to you. We have all heard it. It's a famous verse, but it's not supposed to be boring just because of that. God's word is alive, sharp, and active. It's supposed to be alive and real and refreshing every single time you hear it. So it goes like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. Immediately when we hear eternal life, we think of going to heaven. But you see, in John 17, it says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. That was Jesus praying for his disciples. And he explains that eternal life means knowing God because Jesus didn't come to get us to heaven he didn't he didn't come just to forgive our sins he came to know us I mean yeah we're going to heaven sometime but he came so that we can know him now because We were created perfectly in the garden to be with him. And then we sinned, but Jesus came to fix that. He came to restore what was lost. He came so that we could come back to the Father, so we could know him every single day. You see, I went to church for 15 years. I grew up in a Christian family. I went to a Christian private school for, this is my 12th year in a Christian school. And, you know, I, I, I've always been surrounded by, like, Christians' good stuff. 
but for 15 years of those, like, I, n- I never knew God. I didn't know him, even though I, I grew up in church, like, literally. And I was surrounded by it, by it, but I never knew him. And so there was a point in my life when I came to God, and I said, God, I don't pray. I don't read my Bible because I think it's boring. I don't do that. I don't know you. I don't have a relationship with you. I don't see any difference between my life and other non-Christian people. It's, it's, it's just a confession, God. And if you don't fix that, if you don't do something, if you don't make it real, I don't want to be a Christian anymore. And what God placed in me was a hunger. I didn't know it at the time, but it was a hunger for righteousness. It was a hunger to be right with God. It was a hunger to be in his presence and just know him. And so I want to ask you today, what are you hungry for? What are you hungry for? Are you hungry for friends? Are you hungry for attention? Are you hungry for a promotion, for, a, for being the sport athlete, whatever? Or are we hungry for God, for the living God? Psalm 42 says this, As the deer longs for streams of living water, so my soul longs for the living God to worship in your presence. Because we were created for God and to be with God. And when we don't know him, when we're not at that place, our soul is longing for him. Our soul is hungry to be with God in his presence. You see, in Luke 11, it says this. And so I say to you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For all those who ask will receive, and all those who seek will find, and the door will be open to anyone who knocks. Would any of you who are fathers give your son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or would you give him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? Like, of course not, right? So bad as you are, you know how to get give good things to your children. Now how much more then will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? God wants us to be hungry. I believe that he wants us to want him. Because we got to get his heart. We got to see God's heart there. He says, ask me and I will give you. Seek, and then I will give you. Knock, and then I'll open the door for you. But he wants us to ask. He wants us to be hungry. He wants us to step up and ask him to know him. And it said that how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I mean, in Matthew it says the Father will give good things, but in Luke it says give the Holy Spirit. Because we can read in Romans 14 that God's kingdom is not a matter of food or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. God's kingdom is not a matter of food or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So God's kingdom is in the Holy Spirit. Our bodies are temples for the Holy Spirit. We have God's kingdom within us. I believe that we have everything available. I even believe that God kingdom, God's kingdom is like a buffet. The ticket has been paid, and we're in the restaurant called God's kingdom, and we can have as much as we want. We can have as much drink and food as we want, but you have to be hungry to eat. You have to be thirsty to drink. It says in Matthew 5, hunger and thirst for righteousness, and you will be filled. You have to hunger, you have to thirst in order for God to fill you. That's how we have set it up. And it says in Deuteronomy 4, There you will look for the Lord your God, and if you search for him with all your heart and with all your soul, then you will find him. Because we got to see God's heart here. He wants us to be hungry for something. He's, I don't believe that. I mean, he wants us to, he's saying, ask, come and ask me. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to step up and every day for the rest of my life, I'm going to ask him for more. I'm going to seek his face every day and I'm going to knock, knock, knock on heaven's door every single day, all the time, because that's what he wants. And then he will give more because he's saying, be hungry, then I'll fill you. Search me with everything you are. Go in with all you are and then you'll find me. God wants us to give up everything else. He, he doesn't want to share occupancy. He wants everything. He wants all of us. And we need to totally surrender our lives. Totally give up everything. And come to God with open hearts and open lives. And say, God, I want you. I want to know you. And we can know him better than anyone else. We can know him as a dad. We can know him as a father. And we can talk to him. And we can share our hearts and lives with him. And he can talk to us. It says in John 10 that my sheep will hear and obey my voice. We're supposed to be able to hear him and talk to him and have a relationship with him. You see, prayer is not a one-way communication. It's a two-way communication where you're supposed to talk to him. And the thing is, you're going to seek what you're hungry for. You're going to ask for what you want. And the more we're hungry for God, the more we're going to get from him. You see, there's this, in, like you can read about Jacob, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and of Jacob. And when Jacob was born, it says that he, ha he was born second out of two brothers, and he held tightly onto the heel of his brother Esau when he came out of the womb, it says. Jacob wanted to be born. He wanted to be alive. He wanted to get out first. So he held tightly to the heel of his brother. And when he comes out and he grows up, you see Esau, his brother, he has the privileges and the rights of being a firstborn. But you see, Jacob wants that. He's not satisfied with what he has. So he tricks his brother into giving him the rights and then Jacob gets it but it's not enough he realized that he still he still wants something more he's still he's still longing for something more something greater than himself so then when Isaac his dad is dying he's supposed to give his final blessing from God to Esau but then we can read that Jacob tricks his father into giving him that blessing. He tricks his father into thinking he's his brother. And so he receives this blessing, but it's not enough. Jacob still wants something. He wants something more. And so later on, we can read that. We can read that Jacob was all alone, and the angel of the Lord came up to him. And Jacob took a hold of the angel and he wrestled with the angel. And the angel said, let me go. But Jacob realized that this was the Lord. Jacob realized that this what was he, this was what he has been longing for his entire life. He needed this. And Jacob said, no, I won't let you go until you bless me. I won't let you go until you bless me. Because Jacob was hungry. He wanted more. He wanted God. And so the angel blessed him. And Jacob was satisfied. And I believe with all my heart that God loved that hunger in Jacob. God loves when we step up and when we ask to know him. Um, but we got to give him everything. We got to give him everything. It says, if anyone wants to follow me, he must lay down his life, deny himself, pick up his cross and follow him. We got to give him everything you know maybe someone want to come up and play on the piano um thanks i'll just close it up here i want to tell one more story i want to tell one more story um and it's a story about this guy who had a big house with 10 rooms okay this guy had a big house with 10 rooms and so one day someone knocks on the door 
and the guy goes and opens the door and it's the devil and he 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 the devil runs into the house and he beats the man and he they they rolling around in, in the house all night long and the devil is just beating him up every every hour until until the morning comes and the devil leaves and so this man is just he's just messed up and he doesn't know what to do so the next day during the day someone knocks on the door and and this guy opens and it's Jesus standing at the door and this guy says do you want to come in and Jesus says yes I would like that and so this guy gives Jesus his biggest room his best room but then the night comes and and it knocks on the door again so Jesus is up in his room but the guy comes and opens the door and it's the devil again and the devil just beats down the door and he comes in and he beats the man and he beats the guy and he's just wrestling with him and so when the morning comes the devil leaves again and this man is just furious and he goes up in the room of Jesus and he says Jesus what's wrong with you why didn't you help me and so Jesus it's just like I was just in a room you gave me and so the guy says to Jesus you know what take take the hall of second floor just take my second floor you can have all of my five rooms upstairs okay night comes and he knocks on the door and this guy goes up and looks through he opens the door and it's the devil again and he runs in and he beats the guy he beats him all night long so then in the morning the devil leaves and the guy runs up to Jesus and says Jesus why didn't you do anything why didn't you help me and Jesus says I was in the second floor where you where you gave me shelter where you gave me a place to stay I was just here where you told me to be so this guy he's just confused and he says to Jesus you know what you can just you know what I'll just move into this the smallest room and you can have everything else you can have the nine rooms God and I'll just just live in this tiny room for myself I'll give you 90% and the night's come the night comes and the devil knocks again and this guy he opens the door because he's thinking I gave Jesus way more and so still the devil knocks the door down and he beats this guy up all night long and the devil leaves in the morning and now this guy he doesn't know what to do anymore he goes he comes out of his room and goes to Jesus and he asks what in the world are you doing Jesus why aren't you doing anything why aren't you helping me I gave you everything but Jesus says you still have the keys to the house it's still your house I'm just where you told me to be and so this guy he gives up everything he hands the keys to the house to Jesus he gives him all ten rooms and then the last night comes and the devil knocks and this guy is terrified he's sick and tired of the devil just ruining his life just ruining everything killing and destroying so he comes up to the door shaking 
But then Jesus comes and taps him on the back and he says, I got this one. So Jesus opens the door and the devil looks at Jesus. He bows down on his knees and he says, sorry, Jesus. I thought someone else was living here. And so the devil runs away from the house. He has no authority to go into the house of Jesus Christ. And this is how it is with our lives. We can't afford to give God 10%, 20%, even 99%. Jesus wants everything. He needs everything. No, he's a gentleman. He will take only what he gets. But if you don't give him everything, the devil is going to kill you. The devil is going to beat you up. And you're going to look to God and say, God, why did you do this? But it was never God who did it. It was the devil. Because you allowed the devil to do it. We need to give God everything. 100%. Just surrender everything to God. And he'll fight our battles. God loves us so much. If the worship team want to come up. But you see, the Bible is not about, it's not about giving or inviting Jesus into your heart. It's about giving him your life. It's about surrendering everything and know him. And not let anything ruin that. And I just want to encourage you today to, to when you go home, if you would just open your heart and your life to Jesus and says, Jesus, take everything. Jesus, please just be the center of my life and take everything that I am. And you'll start, you will start talk to him and he will start talk to you and you will develop this love for the Father that will change your life forever. He wants everything. He wants us to be with him. God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you that you have a plan for our lives. I thank you that you're a good, good father, and that is exactly who you are. And we are loved by you, and that's who we are, God. I thank you that you would start to put a hunger in our hearts here today, God. That you would reveal to us the truth about who you are, but also who you want us to be, who you want us to be, God, your children, your, your daughters and sons, God. I ask that you would change our lives, that you would just start to fill us with you, God. And let us realize that you are all we need, and we need you in all, God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Alexander. And now we are adding in a song. I hope that's okay with you guys. We're just going to add in more like Jesus.
Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Grand earth is grave before, moved by the sound of his voice. Seize it up. Called and broken for my reward. And through it all, and through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. And through it all, and through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is swell with me for me for me to not be
Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else. Thank you all guys for coming. We're gonna end with a song called oh, Praise the Name. Uh, it's about the resurrection, so it's uh, a perfect end of a very good uh, evening. Yeah.
Thank you. 